Good morning. This is Vicki Wu, your marketing guru, and today we are talking about the importance of marketing to your customers where they already are. This is one of the core concepts of guerrilla marketing that you may have heard of, not to be confused with gorilla marketing, which is a completely different thing. But guerrilla marketing was a term coined by Jay Levinson in some of his books on that very topic. And it's when companies use inventive and new and unusual ways to present their marketing message. That strategy has continued to evolve with the growth of digital marketing, but the very core of the concept is that you're getting in front of your prospects in places where they already are. Some of the benefits of enacting these type of marketing strategies are the fact that it helps you work your marketing strategy more efficiently. The resources you put into that marketing message, even if it does cost you some time or some expenses, the message itself should get better recall and therefore result in a better return on investment. But you don't have to think up big, elaborate tactics to get your marketing message in front of your prospects where they already are. I want to segue real quick and tell you about one of the most creative ones, um, guerrilla marketing tactics that I saw. And you can actually Google search this. If you search frontline mall ad, so it's frontline, um, the flea and tick, you know, repellent for dogs. And they have a, they did a, basically a mural on the floor of a multi-story mall. So when you were on one of the higher stories looking down, there was this huge picture of a dog, and of course it says front line, but the people that were walking over this floor mural looked like fleas on a dog. So really creative, really out of the box. It really had a lasting impression, obviously. And you can see what I mean. Just go to Google and Google Frontline Mall ad, and it should be one of the images that pops up. And you can see it yourself. It's really interesting. A perfect example of guerrilla marketing. They were getting in front of their prospects where they already were, which was shopping at the mall. Some other examples like that, but you don't have to go to those big elaborate strategies trying to figure out how to make a mural big enough for a whole floor and paying the cost to advertise in a mall. I happen to know what that is, and you don't have to do that. I'm gonna give you seven different examples, like mini marketing case studies of things that we've directly worked on or advised on, and maybe it will spur some ideas for you. As always, leave your comments or questions. Tell me if you've implemented strategies to get in front of your customers where they already are, other than at your business, which is a given, or if you have questions about a strategy that might work best for your business, tell me what kind of business it is down in the comments, and um, I'll get back with you with an idea. So the mini case study number one, and this is video series marketing, working with a television series, a video series, and they, they're they gonna be on their own platform. They're not part of a big existing studio like CBS or ABC or Netflix. So they don't have that built-in exposure that a lot of series will have. One of the most obvious places they want to be is in front of the group of people in the demographics that they want to watch their show. And where that is happening a lot, where people are going to watch videos is of course YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine only after Google. 
So anything that relates to video obviously is where you need to be. Now they aren't releasing their full episodes on YouTube. There is a strategy for people who want to grow in that route, but they're releasing trailers and cameos behind the scenes, maybe some outtakes and looking at doing ads on the YouTube platform to drive people who already like watching videos to go watch the episodes on their own platform. Very easy to get in front of people who like video using that method. The mini marketing case study number two, one of our clients who is a home inspector. One of the big things they do, and we're not involved in this, but it's an example of how you get in front of your customers, is they have staff responsible for going into office meetings at the local real estate offices. The real estate agents have the home buyer clients who are the people who are often scheduling a home inspection. And they know that if you're working with a real estate agent and they recommend a certain vendor to you that they've had good experience with, you're going to value that recommendation. And so it's a very great place for them to be. Some of the strategies we're helping them with specifically is more of their digital and online presence. And two of the places where home inspection clients are searching is on Google, obviously, the largest search engine, and it also powers search results on Android phones, and Yelp. And it's not on Yelp only about being where prospects go to find ratings and reviews of businesses, which is big, but Yelp is what powers search results on Apple phones when you use Siri. So obviously, if I'm driving around and I'm using my phone and I ask Siri to find a home inspector, the Yelp results are what are going to pull up through Siri. So one of the basic strategies that we are doing along with some other things is making sure that their business profiles are optimized and updated both on Google and on Yelp. So again, being where their customers are, that's not the only place they are on Google and Yelp, but it is definitely a place that a lot of them are. Mini marketing case study number three, real estate for sale signs. If we're talking about you know real estate home buyers, we'll talk about this as well. So I worked at one of the largest real estate brokers in the U.S., Century 21, Judge Fight, shout out. One of the strategies we implemented was reflective for sale signs. In some of the hottest real estate markets around, you see multiple for sale signs from all different real estate agents and companies that dot the neighborhood. And this is the very essence of bringing your marketing to where your customers are going to be. Even though a lot of people obviously search for homes online, you're always going to go drive the neighborhood when you can. You want to look at what else is around, how quiet or busy is it, what amenities, are there parks, you know, is it pretty, are there a lot of trees? All of those types of things are things that you find best by driving around. And so a lot of home buyers still drive around the neighborhood they're interested in. And that is still just as important to a real estate agent as having their listings online. What you don't see is those for sale signs at night because they're, they're printed metal signs and unless they're a lit sign with you know electric lighting on them, you're not gonna see them at light. Even with good street lighting, the signs tend to kind of just disappear into the night. So what we did, and as you can imagine, it was a pretty good investment to a company that had over a thousand real estate agents, 20 offices spanning something like either 18 or 21,000 square miles. That's a lot of for sale signs. But when you think about it, especially in fall and winter months, that um, it starts getting dark maybe at 6 p.m. and may not lighten up until 6 a.m. or even after. You've got a good 12 hours of the day, half the day, 
that your real estate for sale sign isn't seen. So even if you know you're you're driving slow and you're trying to use the street lights, it's really hard to see the for sale signs. And most home buyers, other than the weekends, they don't have the time during the day because they work to drive around and be able to see your sign. So what we did is we looked into reflective signs. Now, a few of the competitors did have these reflective signs, but not many. And what we found was that even at night, their signs weren't real reflective. It helped you see them a little bit more, but not to the level we still wanted. So we actually worked with the sign company and had them research and do a mock-up for us with a reflective material that they didn't even regularly carry. And we found that it offered an even brighter sign. It actually, whenever car headlights or even some of the ambient light would hit it, it lit up like it was an actual lighted sign. So driving down a road, even when a competitor had a reflective sign at night, the people who didn't, you couldn't see their signs at all. That competitor, you could tell there was something there, but you may not be able to read the sign as well. Where ours lit up like they were a lit Christmas tree. Very bright, you could see it very well at night, yet it wasn't so annoying, since it wasn't a light on all the time, that it would distract the neighbors. So, perfect example, not only of marketing where your clients are, which is, what the for sale sign itself did, but doing it in a way where you can get more traction out of it because for those, say, you know, 12 hours a day that the competitors couldn't be seen, we could. Mini marketing case study number four. As I told you, I'm bringing you seven of these today. Early in my career, I was in charge of marketing for a mall. Besides the big signs throughout the mall, those signs can get lost among all the other signs that all the stores have. You know, their name, all the sale signs they have in their windows, all the people walking by. At some point when you're a shopper, you stop even registering what is on those big sign stands in the middle of the mall. And we knew that. So, this may sound funny, but one of the places you have a captive audience is in the restroom. For, you know, a couple minutes more, if it's the ladies room and they're standing in line, you have a captive audience. There's not a lot of other visual clutter competing with whatever your message may be. So we installed sign holders on the stall doors where we could change out and have very targeted messaging where it would be seen and not be competing for attention of these shoppers. And this was marketing for the mall itself, not any of the individual stores. So it allowed us to kind of target some message a little bit better in ways that we would not have been able to otherwise. Uh, mini marketing case study number five, and this one is about some of the emerging marketing trends. This is a coffee shop, and they had a mobile app. One of the strategies we implemented was some geofence marketing. And you may have heard about this, that we recommended a slightly different strategy. So basically, they targeted their customers who had their mobile app who were doing some shopping at a kind of nearby little shopping area that was also near one of their coffee shop competitors. So what they did through their mobile app was some targeted geofence ads based near that competitor that would push out a special offer to their customer on their mobile phone for you know, a coffee or a drink or whatever. Coffee drinkers tend to like their regular spot, and this would get them thinking about grabbing a cup of coffee or some other drink from their favorite restaurant that was nearby, maybe you know on the drive home, rather than the competitor that might have been a little bit closer, 
but isn't their regular spot and didn't just offer them a coupon. So it was a way for them to capture their existing customers rather than that customer doing something that would have been slightly more convenient at a competitor. So very similar in concept to the proximity marketing that you can do with geofence beacons for a real retail store, but used in a slightly different way. So very interesting way to kind of get your customers where they already are, even if where they already are isn't where you want them to be and drive them actually to your store. So uh, mini marketing case study number six, what goes well with coffee? It's donuts. Now this is gonna be very cliche when you hear that, you know, you always hear police officers like donuts. But you know what, some of them really do. So do I, it's okay. And those that do like donuts because they are the ones who are on patrol and they're driving around all over an area of the city, they usually know the best donut shops in the area too. So what do we recommend to the local donut shop? Free donuts for police officers. There were a couple of rules they put in place, only you know one per person. Sometimes they would up that to maybe two per person. And it was not available in the drive-thru. And that piece was important because they wanted the police cruiser actually parked in front of the store, even if it was only for a couple minutes while they were going in and getting served their donut. But they wanted that visibility of the cruiser there because once the officer walks in to order their donut, you don't see them anymore. So that cruiser was kind of the, the sign. So, you know, you've got to admit it. You've probably driven past a donut shop at some point and seen a police cruiser in the parking lot and kind of thought to yourself, even if half, you know, subconsciously, that it must have really good donuts because we all know the police officers know the good donuts, right? Eventually, they expanded their program to all of the first responders, so, you know, firemen, EMTs, everything. The cost to the business was, you know, just a few donuts a day, which, like in any food establishment like that, you're going to have some leftovers at the end of the day, usually anyway, and so it kind of took care of that problem as well. They were able to make sure that they efficiently used everything they produced. And they were also able to show some support to their local first responders and give back to the community in that way as well. So really, it was a win-win and, you know, a little bit of strategy to have, help people think that they were the best donut shop around. And they did have really good donuts. I'm a donut connoisseur. I know this kind of thing. Many, many case, um, Mini marketing case study number seven related to dance shoe store marketing. So I teach ballroom dance and one of the ancillary, ancillary services or businesses that I own is an online dance shoe store. Even though I'm not teaching dances regularly due to some, you know, we had some moves in the recent past. So I had to close my studio, but when I did have the studio, one of the easiest ways we marketed these shoes was having a little spot in the studio to display the shoes. Obviously, the ballroom dancers there would be the very target customers that wanted to buy these shoes. Most of our sales driven online, obviously, always, but having them right there in the studio is a great idea. And I was working to partner with some other dance studios to get displays in their studios as well. And then had to close my studio and we were working with Maeve, so it's switched back to only online. But it's still a concept that I do hope to enact because it's successful. So if you do have ancillary businesses, products, or services as an additional stream of income and that's related to your core business, you definitely want to consider all of the ways you can cross promote all of those both ways. Those ancillary services are a great 
secondary stream of income, sometimes a more passive stream of income. So always when you can, when it's right, you want to implement those strategies, but then also think how you can cross promote very easily because the audiences are usually very similar, the same people. And so you have some customers built into your other business. So that's just a few examples of ideas of ways that you can market to your customers right where they are. So now I'm wondering, and put your comment or question, you know, right here below. Have you tried one of those similar types of marketing strategies? Let me know how did it work for you. Or if you want to get ideas on ways you can implement kind of that idea of marketing to your customers where they already are, drop a note. I'll answer your questions. Or obviously, on our website, you can book a complimentary marketing strategy call where we can gather and share some ideas. One of the most basic, obviously, is email marketing if you have an email list, but this gets a little bit more creative, a little bit more towards that realm of guerrilla marketing, where you're doing something a little bit more out of the ordinary, but always, always centered on getting in front of your customers or prospects in places where they already are, not including your business. So that was our marketing coffee break this morning be sure to like or subscribe to our channel or to the video it helps you get notified the next time we put out a video and let us know if you have general marketing questions drop them to us on our facebook page that gives us specific topics we can answer in these marketing coffee breaks and we'll likely answer your question either directly or through one of our um, live shares here. So we will see you next week and have your marketing strategy questions ready.